All right, week three, set two, SWIC number two. Um, we see that we do not have a radical which is isolated, so we add that two to the other side. And then this time we're not taking, in, we're not going to square both. We're going to cube both because we got a cube root. And when we do that, that gives us eight on the right side and two x minus sixty-four on the left. Back to your basic math, adding sixty-four, dividing by two, end up with thirty-six. End of story. Okay, so not not a complicated process. This one I just wanted to show you had the cube in it instead of the cube root. So question eight here, um, another one like it, but this one's even simpler because there's nothing to move to the other side. There's the radicals all by itself. I probably should have switched those and had one in front of the other one. You're just raising it to the third power. Three to the third. Three to the third. Oh, that's 27. I see it right there. Okay. And then I decided to subtract 19. I guess I kind of worked my way up this time. Uh, and that gave me 4x equals 8. 5 by 4, we get 2. So nothing nothing terribly challenging there. Um, pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, on question 9, we're getting into graphing. There are a few things going on here I wanted to talk about or explain. Number 1, we see on the inside left 3. We see on the outside a minus 2. So everything is going to go left 3 and down 2. Okay. Take the basic shape of a, of a square root function. We know what that looks like. And we're moving it left and down. But there's another twist to this. There's a vertical shrink by two-thirds. In other words, we're going to be taking our values and moving them closer to the x-axis. Uh, it's still a positive two-thirds. One thing I wanted to show about these two graphs is they actually have a negative multiplier because it's the bottom half of the... Uh, so you're starting here and you're, you're doing the bottom half instead of the top half. So, but we definitely don't have a negative multiplier. It is a truly a positive multiplier. So B and A were not even, were not even choices really. Um, you'd see D as the right one. It goes left three and down two. Each block is worth two. And then of course you can see that it's been kind of squished, right? And that's how it's more narrow, um, or closer down to, in fact, it's closer down to negative two because of the whole shift down to. Oh, sorry. Sorry for the yawn. Apologies. Um, question 10. Okay, this one has similar features. It's going left two, it's going down four, it's got the vertical shrink. So, but these are by ones. Uh, you might say, well, <laughs> boy, this question is just like the last question. Uh, similar, yes. Left two, down four. Uh, however, they ask a few other questions which I wanted to bring to your attention. They're asking me about the domain. Now, I'm going to zoom in on this because I want to kind of remind you about how we looked at domain. If you imagine smashing all of these points onto the x-axis forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, how much of the x-axis would you cover? Well, you'd probably cover starting here at negative 2 and going that way for a long way. So that's the x values greater than or equal to negative 2. That's your domain. Okay? Then the next question is going to be about range. We talked about how if you took all the points on the graph and you push them up against the y-axis, well, some of them are coming from the left, some of them are coming from the right. Now, we know this thing keeps getting higher and higher and higher forever and ever and ever. So what we're really going to see is starting at negative 4 and going up, 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 up. Now, it takes a real long way to go out to the right to get up very high. I will agree with you there. But it won't stop. So we want a range, which would be the y values being greater than or equal to negative 4. So they do want them written in inequality notation for this question, not interval notation. Uh, interval notation for this would be something like this, negative 4 to infinity. Yes, you will have to be comfortable with that for next year. It's got the bracket on this because of the equal sign. The bracket is because of the equal sign. But just keep that in mind. Um, we would have to use that notation if the question were asking for it in that way. But they said put an inequality. So on this type of question, you're going to use the inequalities. Make sure 
X goes with domain. Y goes with range. Why did I do that? Uh, I hit the wrong button. And what you'll really notice is that domain and range X, Y, alphabetical order. So keep that in mind. Next, question 11 here. Oh, a cube root function. Remember, all the cube root functions look like this when they start out. But then you do things to them. You might shift them up and down. You might move them left and right. In this case, you can see that we've moved it down four because it's outside. And it matches your common sense. Going down four. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, and the one that looks like it, it's been moved down four is letter A. Each one of those graphs. You're basically picking up this center point right here and you're sliding it down four units and putting it down here, which is what you see in letter A. Um, question 12 has a little bit of an interesting algebra thing going on that I wanted to bring to your attention. Uh, inside the radical, there's actually a perfect square. So when you look at 4x minus 12, there's a 4 hiding inside of it. So look what I did here. I pulled the 4 out using the distributive property. Yes, I know it's going backwards from what you normally think of as the distributive property, but that's just what we're doing. We're factoring out a GCF, basically. We're taking that 4 out. Well, we also talked about how you could split radicals by multiplication only. And since 4 times x minus 3, they're being multiplied, it's okay to split them. And then the square root of 4, it's, it's just like simplifying a radical, pulling out a perfect square, seeing what's left over, because the square root of 4 is 2. So we end up with 2, we end up with x minus 3 on the inside of the radical, and of course, this minus 3 has been hanging on for dear life all along. So what's going on? Well, you can see that we've got a vertical stretch by three by two. You can see that we moved to the right three, and you can see that we moved down three. So those are the things that I said in my description, and you got to kind of watch the way they're saying this, right? It the graph stretches vertically by a factor of two. Okay, so the word stretch came first instead of the word shrink, uh, and then after that's where we put our number in. Then it says it's translated, but look how they switch it around on me. They want the number first, three units to the right, three units down. Okay, so you had to tell it how many, how many units and then, and of course, you'll have multiple choice. You'll be picking these things. So it's not, you know, not like you actually have to write things in there. Just going to pick them. <sighs> Sorry, right. long day. Uh, anyway, so that's it for this particular SWIC. I think that's the last one. Yeah, we're good. All right, get on that SWIC, get to that assignment, and then we'll be ready for a test. I know, oh joy.